It's been a couple of years since you, you've been back in the ring. What's that layoff been like for you? Uh, it was hard. Uh, long 22-month comeback for me. Uh, me and my camp are truly excited. We're happy to be back in Brooklyn, happy to be back in Barclays and defending this world title once again. Uh, but it was a struggle. Um, elbow surgery had me out for 12 months. And then as I got back into camp, I had a left hand injury and that put me out for the rest of last year. I, I probably could have got back in December, but I took my time and I said, you know what? That wasn't my year. We're going to come back strong in 2019. And here we are. Now you've said you're faster and stronger th than before. So what message are you going to send to the division? Well, that one time is back and I'm not going nowhere. I was the original champion, the unified champion. I was the only Walter Waite to unify those titles since Floyd Mayweather did it. And I'm going to be focused this year to get back into that established situation. And once when I get back my two titles, we're going to go after the rest of the Walter Waite division. And hopefully the real big dream is to be the undisputed Walter Waite champion of the world one day. But first, you got to go through Josecito Lopez. You know, he, right. he's no stranger to some real fights. He's been in the ring with Canelo, uh, Madonna, uh, broke Victor Ortiz's jaw. What challenges does he present to you? He's rugged, he's tough, he comes to fight, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for everything that he's been through, his ups and his downs. He says he can become champion of the world again, and that's what he's going to be trying to prove Saturday night. So it's going to be a good fight. You know, back in 2014, you sort of systematically broke down Leonard Bundu, right? And then in uh, other fights, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, you kind of came out with, with the haymakers. How are you strategically preparing for this one? What style? Have you chosen that style yet? Oh, yeah, you know, I like to mix it up, add a little salt, add a little pepper, different sugars mm -hmm. and spices, makes everything nice. Um, I think I'm going to be able to sit down a little bit more. I know the fans have seen my boxing ability and me move around the ring, and I use that strategically. Um, it, it helps in the three-minute intervals in boxing to use your footwork, use your hand speed. But this guy, I believe if I stay right there in the pocket, there'll be more opportunities to land that big punch. You, you say in the pocket, it makes me think of football for a second. And, and Bill Belichick gets a lot of credit for game planning specifically to each opponent. Where, where is intelligence and ring awareness amongst the attributes that you have to have to be top? flight? I think ring awareness and understanding your opponents is very key to the sport of boxing. If you come in one dimensional, you can achieve so much. There, there's fighters and there's athletes throughout all sports that can just do one thing very well. But eventually you're going to hit a wall. You're going to find that team. You're going to find that individual that can guard you, that can block you, that has something that makes it so that what you've been doing doesn't work. So I like to be versatile in the ring, and I'm going to show my versatility Saturday night. Now, you also have the power. Uh, you know, what's Lopez going to find out when he feels that power for the first time? Well, you know, like you said, I came out swinging against Danny Garcia. I had that in the back of his mind from the start of the first round, and I'd like to do the same um, here Saturday night. I want him to recognize my power, understand that he's in a dangerous situation against a dangerous man, and we'll see how he handles himself. You were complaining you only have one belt right now before we started filming. You know, you must think that Sean Porter has your belt. You know, is he your next target? He definitely has my belt, and he will be on my radar. Uh, but we would love an opportunity to get Manny Pacquiao. He holds the, the title that's underneath my Super WBA championship. He claimed that he feels like he has more fight in him. I never got to fight Floyd Mayweather. I would love to fight a legend within my career. These young guys, they will always be out there. So we will see what opens up, what doors and possibilities open up after this. Let's talk about those guys for a second. Manny Pacquiao, assuming let's, let's hope his eye issue works out OK. Why should he fight you instead of Mayweather? Well, Mayweather first has to want to get back into the ring. Nobody's really sure, just because he went to Japan and made $9 million, nobody's sure that he really wants to perform and do what it takes to, to fight a real 12-round boxing match. So it's up to Floyd, you know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the fight happened again, but there's a lot of people saying they don't want to see it again. You know, 40 years old versus 40 years old. Um, if you're, if you're old and you want to do something in the sport, why not fight the young guys and just prove to yourself, you know, like Tom Brady, you know, he's going up against all the other young athletes and he's holding his own. If you can do it, if you can stay in the game, you stay in the game and you, and you do your best to compete with the top level opponents in the division.
Let's talk about Earl Spence Jr. for a second. He's been on our show saying other fighters in the division are, are ducking him. How do you respond to, to those comments? I love Errol Spence Jr. I give him a lot of respect. Um, I love his performance that made him world champion against Kell Brook. But at the end of the day, I'm not healthy enough. 22 months out, I'm not going to fight the number two guy. You know, you don't see an uh, uh, injured player, you know, going up against the next best competition. I look forward to the day that I share the ring with Errol Spence Jr. I look forward to defeating him in the ring when that day comes. And so we're not ducking anybody, dodging anybody. I understand his emotions and his feelings, but he is on my radar, and I truly look forward to that fight one day. He's taking on Mikey Garcia. Who you got in that fight? I definitely have Errol Spence. He's the bigger guy. He's the stronger guy. And they're both very smart boxers. I think Mikey's going to put up a good fight, but I think he's biting off just a little bit more than he can chew at 147. All right, you're almost there. You're almost back in the ring. What's going to happen once you step back in there? Really, I'm looking to have fun Saturday night. It's been 22 months since I've been able to perform. You know, it's going to be like, for me, it's just a performance. You know, I want to look good. I want to have a good fight. I w I'm going to take a few punches, and I'm going to do my job well and just re reinstate that Keith One-Time Thurman is back and is doing well at 147.